Welcome to the Oak Hill Cemetery, perhaps one of Pontiac's greatest treasures. Having been listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1989, this incredible collection of late 19th and early 20th century architecture dates all the way back to the year 1839. Join us as we explore the cemetery's past and dive into its history. But before we get started, I've totally got to drop in this quick intro, and maybe while I'm doing that, you guys could give my channel a quick subscribe! <laughs> Enough of that, let's take a look at the history of perhaps one of Pontiac's oldest landmarks, the Oak Hill Cemetery. Pontiac was first settled in 1818 and 1819 by the Pontiac Company. And in 1822, the company set aside a parcel of land just east of town for use as a cemetery. In 1839, the village of Pontiac hired Captain Hervey Park to survey the parcel and lay out a lot as a cemetery. This became the first portion of the present Oak Hill Cemetery. And the grounds were plotted for use by 1841. Over time, more land was allocated to the cemetery until it reached its present size by about the turn of the century. Various improvements were made over the years, including replacing the original cemetery office, which had previously burned down. The cemetery contains the remains of six veterans of the Revolutionary War and well over 27 veterans of the Civil War. Oak Hill Cemetery occupies a piece of high ground just to the east and overlooking Pontiac's Central Business District. The cemetery grounds are divided into three sections by University Drive and Paddock Street, which cross each other at right angles. However, only the two older sections to the west or southwest of Paddock Street are included in the National Register of Historic Places. The area to the north and west of University and Paddock, which contain the original grounds platted between 1839 and 1841, retain its hilly glacial topography and groves of hardwoods, especially the oaks which gave the cemetery its name. The cemetery contains one of Michigan's most extensive collections of late 19th and early 20th century funerary art and architecture, including a Gothic memorial chapel dating from 1898 and nearly a dozen other family mausolea. The steepest slopes into which several family mausolea are built are just to the north of University Drive. The trees at Oak Hill are nearly all hardwoods, with plenty of oaks, maples, and hickory trees, but 26 varieties of trees trees have been identified here. The majority of the trees are mature and range in size from 12 to 40 inches in diameter. Groves of large, old trees cover much of the ground. The cemetery's University Drive frontage on both sides is lined with a simple wrought iron picket fence with urn capped and chamfered edge and post of a standard late Victorian design. Pier is built of rock-faced fieldstone blocks with dome-like cement caps flank the entrances on the north side of University Drive. The cemetery office building stands on the south side of University a short distance east of the main north side entrance. The building is a very modest one-story front gable structure of rock-faced fieldstone, ashlar masonry with a portico in front. It appears to date from the turn of the century. Another stunning feature of the southern section of the cemetery is the Buckland Memorial Chapel. The chapel was completed November 4th, 1898, and is a tasteful structure of Old English style built of sandstone with a roof of German modeled tiling. Its windows are of opalescent glass and set in the rear walls are three memorial tablets of solid bronze, bearing inscriptions in memory of Don C. Buckland, Mrs. Sarah A. Buckland, and Mrs. Harry G. Hamilton. Another interesting Victorian structure is the large Gothic Revival style mausoleum located just inside of the main entrance gate in block four in the original portion of the cemetery. This rough faced native stone structure is rectangular in plan with a double gable roof having decorated gables with finials at the top and base of each gable end. Small buttresses are found on the front east corners of the protruding entry section and the front north and south corners of the main structure. The front entry has a center pointed arch within a separate and lower gable end. A panel of carved stone with foliage and the letter M with a crest fills the arch. Fine detailed iron gates complete the entry opening which is entered from a three-step platform. A smaller cut stone broken course mausoleum is located on the northwest corner of Block 4 at Paddock Street and University Drive. This structure with a steeply pitched roof combines a variety of style elements. The heavy round arch over the front entry is a Romanesque feature. The vent in the front gable and with a center pointed arch and elliptical sills is a Gothic revival detail. Wide buttresses which taper toward the roof edge and the vermiculated stone buttresses which flank the front entry portray a somewhat Egyptian influence. Fine detailed iron gates fill the entry opening of this Victorian era structure. The Petrie Mausoleum located close to Paddock Street in Block 4 of the original portion of the cemetery is an unusual structure with a hexagon plan and a projecting front entry. The hipped roof has steep gabled pitch dormer windows on each slope with center pointed arch window openings. Constructed of brick, now painted, the mausoleum has a projecting front entry with a separate gable containing a center pointed arch door opening. Buttresses are located on each of the six corners and also flank the front entry. A corbelled brick cornice is found beneath the roof eaves. Stone finials are located on each of the gable dormers and a more elaborate metal finial
pinyal is located atop the point of the hip roof. Heavy iron gates guard the entrance, which is entered from a four-step platform. The overall appearance of this late Victorian structure borrows heavily from the Gothic Revival style. While the above noted chapels and mausoleums are freestanding structures with four or six complete walls, the following described structures are built into the sides of the hill. The Resurgent Mausoleum in Block 4 is built into the south side of the hill on the north side of University Drive, in the original portion of the cemetery. This Gothic Revival-style structure has a steep gable roof with a narrow gable dormer window on each roof slope. The front entry projects forward from the main structure with a separate gable. The entry opening is formed by a center-pointed arch constructed of stone. The main entry also contains a very simple set of iron gates, without detail, except for the arrow points along the top of each section. The remainder of the structure is constructed of brick, now painted white. Buttresses flank the front entry and are found on each elevation at the corners. Corbel brick Detailing is located beneath the eaves. Heavy carved stone finials are located at the four corners of the main roof and the front corners of the entry projection. A stone cross with the initials IHF carved upon the face is located at the front end of the entry roof peak. A large, more elaborately detailed stone finial, also with a cross, is found at the front end of the main roof peak. The Southern Mausoleum in Block 4 is located near the top of the hill, above the Resurga Mausoleum. Constructed of rock face cut stone, the structure has a flat roof, with three offset walls, two of which extend out from the hill. The front exterior is the only wall which reaches from floor to roof. The entry is composed of a heavy, rounded, cut stone arch with keystone motive. The arch is seemingly supported by flat cut stone pilasters with chamfered corners and simple capitals, which flank the entry. A very simple set of iron gates guards the entry with the cornice along the front of the roof edge. A statue of an angel is situated upon the flat roof, overlooking the entry, which is approached by a pathway cut into the hill between retaining walls walls which flank the front entry. The Austin Mausoleum in Block 4 is smaller than the previously described mausoleums and without a great amount of detail. However, the square front facade does display a few refined details which add to its symmetry. Constructed of regular coarse cut stone, the front corners almost serve as pilasters which support the overhanging cornice of two courses topped by thin flat cut stone. Beneath the cornice is a large projecting square cut date stone, inscribed with the date 1903. Beneath the date and directly above the archway keystone is the name Austin. The date stone is flanked by pairs of projecting smaller square cut stone stone corbels supporting the cornice. The rounded archway of the entry is flanked by two diamond-shaped stones. The entry contains simple iron gates which guard metal doors within. The William H. Osmond Mausoleum in Block 1 is similar to the Austin Mausoleum, constructed of regular coarse-cut stone and having the same corner pilaster motive. The pilasters project approximately four inches and seemingly support a single coarse-cut stone cornice with square-cut stone details with a four-inch overhang. The entry has a round arch composed of cut stone with a much larger keystone. A gray granite marker with the name WMH Osmond inscribed upon a smooth polished base is topped by a sunrise pattern with a rough cut stone arch. The date 1900 is inscribed in the face of the rough cut stone which forms the base of this marker which is centered above the front entry. Simple iron gates fill the entry opening. Concrete retaining walls flank the front facade of this structure which has a Romanesque flavor. One of the most prominent monument types in Oak Hill is the obelisk. Obelisks were used between the 1850s and 1890s for the most part. However, there are a few examples which were placed as late as the 1950s. The obelisk are varied with some ending in a point at the top, some with finials, some with urns, and some with crosses. The bases of these are equally varied with some having a great amount of detail and ornamentation while others are relatively simple. Most are made of marble and granite in a variety of colors. The earlier examples often exhibit a considerable amount of weathering with inscription barely legible. Another prominent type is the thin slab headstone. These markers are approximately two to four feet in height, one to two feet wide, and one and a half to four inches thick. Most have flat or rounded tops and contain a variety of symbols above the inscription on the face of the stones. These are the earliest type of markers, with dates ranging from the 1820s, probably those that were relocated from other burial sites. Most of these are dated before the 1860s. Many of these markers are weathered and the inscription is barely legible. The graves of war veterans are marked with short slab markers with simple inscriptions. Very little, if any, detail is found on that type. Symbols on the slab markers include the following. Willow trees, praying hands, a single hand pointing up or down, urns, foliage, lambs, grapes, and other fruit, a cape draped over one corner, doves, fallen trees, crosses, gathered wheat, clasped hands, roses, and other flowers, hearts, and entwined rings. Many of the Victorian monuments, in addition to the obelisks, are vertically oriented. Many are square or round columns setting on rectangular or square bases. Materials range from marble, granite, sandstone, limestone, and cast zinc. There are approximately 30 to 40 of the zinc type. The following fine examples the McGungle Buckland and Thorpe Condal monuments in Section 4 were manufactured by the American Bronze Company of Chicago, Illinois, as indicated by small raised lettering on the bases of the monument. 
Monuments. The Hillman Monument and many of the others do not have the manufacturer name visible. Another Victorian type is a heavy rectangular block of marble or granite, often with classic or Victorian eclectic architectural elements on the corners, top and base. Classic Greek columns on the corners are common. Multiple gable end types and a variety of cornices are common with columns on the corners and a variety of foliage inscribed upon the smooth face. The base of these monuments are often a very rough cut stone in a single slab or an assemblage of smaller rough cut stones. This provided a contrast to the smooth face and refined qualities of the main part of the monument. One of the most unusual monuments in the cemetery is that of Walter J. Bailey. In section six, constructed of molded concrete, the monument is approximately three and a half feet wide and four and a half feet high. The majority of the monument is comprised of simulated cut stone blocks with smooth, serrated, etched, rounded, and vermiculated surfaces. The remaining blocks simulate sections of tree logs. The inscription bearing the names of Walter J. Bailey and his first wife, Belle, is placed on an unraveled scroll centered on the west face of the monument. An inscription for Jenny, Walter's second wife, is found beneath the scroll. The scroll motive is surrounded by what appears to be a fringe cape draped above and over the south West corner. A large fringe tassel on braided rope is draped over and beneath the cape. A lily rests upon a large fern, and lily leaves seemingly sprout from the base and side panels. Other monuments made of concrete which simulate tree trunks are more common. However, none match the detail and uniqueness of this particular monument. Oak Hill's shady grounds are the final resting place of many of Pontiac's early settlers, leading citizens and war veterans over the years. Six veterans of the Revolutionary War who came to settle in Pontiac, including Stephen Mack, are buried here. Up to 27 veterans of Civil War service, including many who had died in action, had been laid to rest at Oak Hill. Among them were former Governor Moses Wisner, who as Colonel leading the 22nd Michigan Infantry died of typhoid fever, and Major General Israel B. Richardson, a veteran of the Mexican and Seminole Wars, who was mortally wounded in 1862. Brigadier General Joseph T. Copeland, a veteran of the 5th Michigan Cavalry who died in 1893, and probably many other Civil War veterans who died after 1869, are also at rest in Oak Hill. A cannon placed in the cemetery in 1870 serves as a memorial to the soldiers and the sailors who were buried here. The grounds also contain the remains of local merchants, manufacturers, politicians, and others who were leading citizens in their day. For example, Don Carlos Buckland, who is memorized not only by his own zinc monument, but by the Buckland Memorial Chapel, who was an important merchant who made a success of various retail and wholesale businesses and of investing in real estate. Buckland was an early member of the Republican Party and served in the late 1850s and early 1860s as chairman of the state and county Republican Central Committees. He was later appointed postmaster for Pontiac and served for eight years in that capacity. David Ward was a surveyor who is said to have become the wealthiest person in Michigan from the proceeds of the lands he obtained in payment for his survey work. Schuyler Hodges, who built the Hodges House, the major early hotel in downtown Pontiac, and Ephraim Howard, who built the Howard Theater, the city's principal playhouse and auditorium in 1904. The cemetery contains the remains of the larger part of those citizens who made the city flourish in the days before its domination by the automobile industry. If you have not been to the Oak Hill Cemetery, I urge you to take a look. Thank you for joining us on this tour of Pontiac's Oak Hill Cemetery. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and let us know in the comments down below what you think of this stunning collection of both history and architecture. Oh yeah, and let's not forget, I'm also a real estate agent as well, specializing in historic homes as well as the city of Pontiac. So if you know someone who's looking to buy or sell a home in Metro Detroit, you should totally have them give me a call. And as always, I appreciate the heck out of you, my friends. And until next time, bye!